Dan Townsley here with another Furcot Pro Tips. Today's trip tip is going to be a brand new feature in Furcot called Plan B Routes. So let's get started. I'm going to start a new trip plan. And uh, normally I make sure I have all my defaults set, but I think I do. Um, as we start this plan, I'm going to start with a blank trip and uh, I can select any part of the world I want to plan a trip in. In this case, uh, I'm going to plan my trip in South America, but it could be in Europe, Asia, Africa. Uh, you pick your spot. The uh, nice thing about FurCut is being an online service, uh, Google Maps cover the world. So I can plan anywhere. So I'm going to zoom in on an area of uh, Chile. Uh, happens to be the eastern edge of the Atacama Desert. And I'm going to create a route that goes from San Pedro de Atacama to uh, San Antonio de los Cabres. So let's zoom in into San Pedro where I'll set my first point to create my route. And again, nothing's changed as far as how I create routes, um, how I edit routes, and you should be familiar with that uh, before using Plan B because you can use all of the route creation options in setting your Plan B routes. So let's get started with a point here. And uh, I've set my point. I've saved it. Uh, I want to all my defaults for stops are set to zero duration. So anytime I get click on the map and save it as a stop, uh, I get a stop with zero duration. I could set that as a pass through, um, I suppose. Uh, but in this case, I want to make sure I have a waypoint when I export to my GPS. So I need a stop. And I'm going to come down and set my endpoint. So start point, end point. Again, nothing new. I'm going to zoom in again to make sure um, what I'm showing here is uh, my ultimate destination, which is for the day is down at Salta. Uh, but for now, uh, so I can create my, the heart of my routes here. I'm going to create uh, an endpoint for this segment and go ahead and save it. And Furcot will have calculated a path for me. In this case, it actually looks just like I wanted it to. And it uh, took the path I wanted to take, which is a good thing. I don't have to edit much. So there's my primary route. Now, it just so happens that uh, I know that this segment in Route uh, 73 here is actually at the step of the Andes. And if the weather is not really great, I don't want to be out there. Uh, it's uh, not a sealed road. Um, so what I want to do is I want to create an optional route for that day, which keeps me on sealed roads. So I want to start at this point here, at this intersection, and I'm just going to place a stop. So I click, place a stop. I'll eventually give this stop a name. But uh, for now, I'm just going to say OK, make it a stop with zero duration. So it started out as a pass through. Once I change the icon, you know, of course, it becomes a stop. Again, zero duration. That's my default. And I can use any icon I want. If I go back to pass through, of course, then it's a pass through point and I won't get a waypoint in my GPX export. So I save that. I've now created a point there. So what I've done is, in essence, I've created a segment to my route path. So if I go over and now click on this and highlight it, you'll see I have a route segment. Now, at this point, this is where I want to create a plan B, an optional route. But when I look over at my trip drawer, or my plan drawer, excuse me, uh, I don't see any of the advanced features that I would have expected to see. So I must have forgotten to turn on the advanced features for this route. Out. 
I would normally have that turned on in my defaults, and actually I do. I turned it off just so we could walk through this to remind you all that you need to make sure you have your advanced use selected. So here I've clicked on the map. Here I'm clicking on advanced use. And once I click on advanced use, I need to refresh my plan drawer for that segment. And once I do that, I can either close this or just click on the route uh, to highlight it. So I click on the route segment, and now you see all the advanced features that you're probably used to seeing if you're like me. Again, this is my default. So if we look up at the route segment header now, along with our usual reset alternate, we have a new feature called Plan B. So, I'm highlighting this. Notice the pop-up says, set this route segment aside for use later. So, what I'm doing is, um, I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to select a new route segment. Okay. So, I could look to see if there is an alternate route segment that'll work for me, or I could use a trip or a trip segment or a track from another file in the find drawer. In this case, uh, I look at alternate and there's nothing there because alternate follows the way I want. So really, all I need to do is set a point on the road that I want to be on, and FERCOT's going to create a route path for me. So now you see it's created a new route path for my primary route that I want to travel and created a dashed line plan B for my other path. Now, the cool thing is, is I can toggle these back and forth. So the one I have highlighted now is actually my optional path because it's going to be weather dependent. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use, I'm going to give it a name, which I can, just very cool. I'm going to say, name this my good weather route. So I type in my name. By the way, I can change the color, as you've seen. And this name and the color will export with this track in a GPX file, and the name and color are coded as Garmin attributes. So now I can go up here, set my filter back to stops so that I can highlight that proper segment. And here I'm highlighting again my optional. Again, notice the mileage. Mileage is all pertain. Um, if I select an optional route segment or a plan B, in my trip drawer, or my route plan, excuse me, in my route plan, uh, I'll notice that the timing for the route changes. So this isn't just a, a dumb line on the map. It actually affects my route plan. So uh, as you can see, I can toggle them back and forth. And if I wanted to give the other plan B a different color, I could do that also. Again, I can give them separate names uh, as a plan B. I can give them separate names. So in this case, I'm going to create a new primary route. So I clicked on my primary route. I created a plan B and clicked over on this uh, road and forgot created a new primary route for me. So now from uh, San Antonio, down to San, excuse me, San Pedro down to San Antonio, I have a new primary route. Okay. And all I had to do was click one point onto that road and forgot created that primary route for me. Again, I can toggle back and forth between my original primary route to the north and my new primary route to the south. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to toggle so that um, I see the whole day. That's what I've got now. So there's the whole day's route so far. And I'm going to select that. 
I'm going to give it uh, a color while I've got it selected, and I'm going to give it a name. In this case, uh, I'm going to call it my day one primary route. And I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to go toggle these things so that you see that information stays. So here I have the primary route. And again, if I select this, I can always change that lower primary route. I could edit any of these actually, and they'll stay what they were as far as set a plan B or not a plan B. Okay. So again, nothing changes as far as what I want to edit. Okay. So here I've toggled back and forth so that my primary route's at the north and my secondary route is to the south. Now, so here I have two plan Bs in my trip plan. Well, I can actually create as many plan Bs as I want. And I can color code them any way I want. And if it's a full days track or a plan B track, that will export out again to my GPX tracks file. In this case, I want to add another plan B. And here I'm just coding my route segments so that they're consistent uh, with what I expect to see in my GPX export file for my tracks. Because this will show up on my GPS, which is very cool. So, I do want to create a third plan B route. And I want to do that up here um, in an area that I know exists, which is one of the most cool areas in the world, if you're a techie geek like I am. Up here in the Atacama Desert, at the highest point of the Atacama Desert, 16,500 feet, is the Alma Radio Telescope. So what I want to do now is select a spot in my primary route where I can interject uh, an optional or plan B route. In this case, my plan is to do an out and back. But So what I need to do is, as we've seen before in prior videos, I need to set a stop on each side of the road I want to go out and back on. And so I'm now creating that little segment on each side of the road I want to do an out and back. And once I get that segment created with a couple of waypoints, I can then go out to the area where I want to have FERCOT route me uh, towards the Atacama or the Alma Array, excuse me. So here I am zooming out, and then I'm going to zoom in to find the location to set my point. Here I am. So as I zoom in, I can use all of the features that are available to me uh, to locate the proper position where I want to set my point. In this case, I'll turn on the satellite imagery so I can see where the uh, ALMA radio telescope main site is. And I'll set my point there. Again, I can give it a name and change it from a pass-through to a waypoint or a stop, uh, which I will do here. Um, and I'm going to save that, uh, change it to a flag. And as soon as I do that, FERCOT routes me. But what you see it did is it routed me from the beginning of my primary route out to the point at the Alma Array and then back to the segment that I wanted to plan B. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, and FERCOT didn't do anything wrong. It just, I just let it do what it wanted to do. But what I want to do is an out and back. And as we've seen prior, the way to do an out and back is to just grab a point in the middle of that segment that we created on each side of the road and then drag it out to the spot on the road where we want to stop. In this case, set the Alma Array, and I'll zoom in on that and drop my point. Um, so that's where I want to drop my point. I drop my point, and now we see, uh, we zoom out, 
we have a proper out and back as my plan B. Now, of course, right now it's primary, but I can just click on it, highlight it, uh, open its properties, go back to plan B, and now it is the plan B, uh, an alternate route or optional route for my primary route. So now I have my out and back, and I can continue uh, with the rest of my plan. What I want to do is change the name of this entry waypoint. Uh, since I'll hit that waypoint, I want it to be uh, informational. Uh, I'm going to call it, uh, go right it to Alma uh, at the next road. So uh, I know that I have a turn coming up shortly. So now you see I have a new plan B and I can again set it to my regular red color. And here I now have my plan with my primary route, two short plan B options, and a daily plan B option. You can have as many plan Bs as you want to have. Uh, if you're out in the outback and you have lots of trailheads that offer you options, um, you can create many plan Bs. Uh, especially out and backs, uh, which are very handy. So, uh, I now have my trip set the way I want it. I can export that trip. Uh, I'm going to export it as tracks to GPX uh, data types. And when I export this file, I'm going to open it up in my uh, text editor so you can see that the tracks actually were exported all four of them, along with my waypoints. And I'll open these track um, f segments up so that you can see uh, the information that was passed from FERCOT that's in them that's going to be available to the GPS. So I open my primary track up, and this is my day one primary as I named it. You can see the default name below there for the day. Here's my uh, day one optional track, so that's the primaries option all day. And now here are my two uh, red plan B tracks. Again, they're coded uh, for Garmin uh, track color. And again, here is my uh, good weather track. So now they've got our exported file, and uh, we can uh, load that into our GPS or our navigation program on our smartphone. Uh, we see that uh, this new Plan B uh, route feature in FERCOT can give us, give us lots of travel options in our trip plans. Make sure to set your advanced use on in your plan filter. And again, um, all of the prior features still are working as they should. Uh, meaning that we can edit route, route segments any way we wish. We can edit plan B routes any way we wish. We can um, import segments, um, cut segments. Um, so all of those prior features are still available to us. Uh, this is a wonderful feature. I hope you use it uh, and enjoy it. And Hopefully we'll talk to you in our next FurCut Trip Tips Pro Tips video.